Good morning. It is all Hallow Eve, Halloween today. You know, this is a period of time when people dress up. They choose something that they would like to be, one of the Marvel characters. Uh, but the question this morning, I think, for us is, what do you want to be? Do you really want to be a child of God? Do you really want to be a Christian? And if so, I hope it's not a costume that you put on and wear for a day, for a short period of time, but that you put it in your heart and you live for Christ. For the last 12 weeks, we have been looking at the book of John. We have entitled this series of lessons to believe in Jesus and live. We are at the last of those lessons today to wrap up. And on this wrap up, I have chosen to call it, It Is Finished. You know, in the beginning, he spoke and galaxies whirled into place. He spoke and the stars, the moon, and the sun lit up the sky. He spoke and planets began their orbits. He spoke again and the water and the land and the skies were filled with light. Planets and animals of all sorts, all sizes, running and roaming, growing and multiplying. Again, he spoke and man and woman were formed in his image. Thinking, breathing, loving, human life. In the beginning was the word, the words of love and words of glory, eternal, infinite, majestic, unlimited, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving. The living, loving word of of God. He is Jesus Christ, and he is, he was, and he always will be. Then some years later in love, God came in the flesh to an insignificant little speck of a planet called Earth. The mighty creator became part of his creation, flesh and bone. He was susceptible to sickness, to injuries, to temptations, to persecutions, aging, and yes, even death. But brethren, love, pure love, made him come. You see, he had to come. His creation, man, needed him. He, man, us, his creation had made such a big mess of things. So the word, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the spotless lamb, the sinless one, left heaven and came to earth on a rescue mission. He came to save humanity. He came to pray, to pay the payment of the world's sin. He came to save all who would listen. He came to save all who would believe. He came to show love and to give the gift of eternal life. Restoration, redemption, and forgiveness. Brethren, he is the word. The living, breathing, living word of God in the flesh. He is Jesus the Savior, the Messiah, and that is the truth, the absolute truth. We've been studying John now for three months. We've had 12 Sundays that we have looked at the book of John. And with each sermon, brethren, it has been my sincere prayer that we would see Jesus as that truth. It's been my prayer that we would see the living, breathing truth through God's word. 
John wrote, so that all who read or heard this word might believe in Jesus and be baptized so that they could have life eternal, abundant life, life to the full, and especially a life in fellowship with God. Just as God had planned from creation, before creation, you know, this book that we've looked at, the book of John, it's not a history of Jesus. It's not a history of Christianity. It is not a biography of Jesus' life. But instead, John, the Apostle John, the Apostle that Jesus loved, one of the sons of thunder, writes so that we may live by believing in Jesus Christ and following his commands. John showed us Jesus' true identity in the opening lines of the gospel. Open your Bibles, and I hope you have them. Turn to the very first chapter of John and look at verses 1 through 4 as I kind of paraphrase and talk about those first four verses. In the beginning... The word already existed, not created, not brought in existence by birth, but already he existed. Before creation, the word was with God. Right there with him from the very beginning, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the word was God. It was God, is God, always has been God, and always will be God. He existed in the beginning with God, not born, not created, existed from the beginning. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. Nothing or no one was created without him. Just a word from the Word. And the Word gave life to everything that was created. And His life brought light in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the living, breathing creator of the world, came to earth to be the light that was missing in this evil world. He came to shine the light, to be the light. But you know what? The world did not know him. It didn't recognize him. You see, the world preferred the darkness, so the world rejected him. I don't know about you, but that's tragic. That's horrible. But there is good news. There is good news. The whole world did not reject him. You see, John tells us that there is hope. There is hope because all who did recognize him and all who will recognize him, all who believe in him and are baptized for the remission of sins are reborn. They have received the, the right by believing and following his commands to become children of God. Just as he had planned. Reborn, not a physical rebirth, but a spiritual rebirth. A new start. Becoming a new creation. So the word became human flesh. And he lived among us, right here with us. John, in his gospel, shows us seven signs of Jesus' true identity. And I hope you remember, as we go through here, we have studied, over the last 12 weeks, we have studied each of them. He showed us these signs so that we might believe that all who see allow themselves to see might believe. 
He turned the water to wine. He healed the official son with just a word. Healed the man crippled from birth in the pool. Fed thousands of people with just a few fishes and a few loaves on the side of a mountain. He walked on the water. He raised the dead. He restored sight. All signs, wonderful, amazing miracles so that all who saw might believe and obey his commands and live. John recorded Jesus' words when he said, I am before Abraham was. I am. I am from before creation. Then John records Jesus' word and he tells us, and he shows us his true identity. Jesus is the Word, the Lamb of God, the Son, the bread, the living water, the vine, the light, the gate, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life, and the resurrection and the life of the statements he re refers his pre-existence. He establishes his pre-existence. Concerns, confirms for all who will see and believe and obey his commands that he is who he says he is. But John, John in his gospel, he saves the best. He saves the best and the greatest signs for last. John as a living eyewitness he shows us the cross of Christ. He shows us the plan of salvation. The plan that had been started before Genesis 1. The plan that started before God spoke, before the rocks, before the water, before the humanity, before it all. Then John shows us the resurrection they put our Lord, brethren, in the ground, dead in the ground, in a cold tomb. But three days later, just as he promised, just as the prophets had written about centuries and centuries earlier, Jesus walked right out of there. You remember, the stone was rolled back. Have you ever thought about this? That stone was rolled back not to let Jesus out. It was not rolled back to let him out, but to let us in. To let us have access to Christ, to let us see, to let us believe and obey, and to let us live by faith. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, loved us. He loved us. Our Lord and Savior loved us. He loved us so he came. He loved us so he lived. He loved us so he died. He loved us so he rose again. He loves us so he's coming back for us. He loves us to make a way for us to be restored. John writes so that we might believe and obey. So that we can live because of our obedience to his word. Jesus did many things. He did many things while he was here. So many things that it is impossible to record it all. He did many things after he was resurrected. And he has plans for many things yet to come. But John writes these words, and these signs are evidence, true evidence, overwhelming evidence, that Jesus is who he says he is. And he will do what he says he will do. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no one can get to heaven any other way. He is the only way. And that is grace. Let me take just a couple of minutes and tell you about the grace of Jesus. The amazing grace of Jesus. You know, there's another apostle. 
the Apostle Paul, who writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, about his grace. He said, God saved you by his grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Grace by God, a gift from God. You know, through belief in Jesus Christ. It's not by works. It's not by deeds. It's not by the money or things. Grace that you can't earn. Grace that you can't buy, grace that you can't inherit, but grace that is absolutely free for the taking for those that, for those that what? Those that do what? Believe, confess his name, and are baptized for the remission of sins. Place their trust in Jesus for salvation. Trust in him for life. Brethren, nothing you can do will make Jesus love you more than he already does. Nothing you can do will make Jesus love you any more than he already does. Nothing you can do will make him love you less. The Bible says all who confess Jesus as Savior and are baptized for the mission of sin, all means all. It is finished. Jesus said on the cross, everything that's required for salvation has been completed. All you have to do is reach out and accept that gift. And you know what? There is a song in our books, and if you have your hymn, turn to our invitation hymn today, song number 275. I think that this song is the heart of this message. What will wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Brethren, I sincerely hope that as we have gone through the book of John, and I, and I know that there's all of you that are in here have read that story many, many times. But have you ever really seriously looked at it and realized what Christ has done for us, what he continues to do for us? And all he does is ask us to put our faith in him to believe in him and be baptized for the remission of sins and have eternal life. The pleasures of this world are many. And they may bring joy, they may bring pleasure for a short period of time. But not for eternal life. To live for God is to have life eternal and to spend eternity with him. If you're here this morning and you've never named his name, think about it seriously, because today would be a great day to do that, to confess his name, to be buried in baptism, to be raised to walk in the newness of life. And if you think about it, if you look at God's word, there is no better way to live than what the Bible outlines, even if there were no God there would be not a better way to live your life. To have friends, to be accepted by others, to live your life strong as God has asked us to do. But if you are here and you've done that and you've turned away from him, how sad that is. Because you realize even we're all sinners, but if we remain in our sin, you've got to realize that God still loves us. And he came so that he could save humanity. And if you're here today and you've turned back to the world, come back to the one that truly loves you. Ask for his forgiveness and take up your place again as one of his children. If you have need of the gospel invitation, won't you come while together we stand and sing. Wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus.